Hey, what's up guys? This is Ed for me. Uh, as you can see, this is my Z4's engine bay. Got the air filter taken out. And as you can see, I also have the expansion tank taken out. Probably wondering why I have all these things taken out. And it's not just for uh, fluid flush, but uh, this is what actually happened a few days ago. I was out with my wife and uh, I realized that there was this huge puddle underneath my car and guess what? The uh, expansion tank decided to explode on me, so I got to get the car towed back home. After I got home, I did a little visual inspection, put a little bit more uh, distilled water in it to see if there was a leak and sure enough, the expansion tank had exploded um, and there was just loads and loads of liquid coolant coming out. After I got the expansion tank out, I took a look at it right down the side an entire long probably five inch long crack so i gotta say this isn't actually something surprising to me but a lot of bmw owners with these expansion tanks realize that there was a structural engineering deficit um, and as a result of that we are replacing our expansion tanks and it was pretty common even the tow truck driver was telling me that the fix is um, pretty common and they do it all the time on BMWs. But um, knowing me, I decided to just buy myself another expansion tank and that's what you see me installing here. I just wanted to give you guys a couple of pointers. In terms of getting the expansion tank out, you just have to take off the hoses. Um, and other than that, it's yanking it straight up. Uh, afterwards, getting the expansion tank back in is just a reverse. Another issue that I know a lot of people have is um, doing the fluid filling and making sure that the air is being bled out of the system. So there is actually a very specific procedure that BMW requires you to do in order to bleed and vent the system. Um, and for me, the only way that I was actually able to do it was to have the front end of the car lifted up so that the bleeder screw was actually the highest point. I had the car flat like I believe um, I've been told before and it just wasn't able to get the thermostat open in order to get the heat into the car. So what I actually had to do was drive out of the garage onto my driveway which is on a hill and all of a sudden um, the air was actually able to bleed out of the system a lot better and I was actually able to have heat in my car again which basically tells me that um, the entire bleeding system was done properly. You might be asking yourself why I'm actually filling it up with distilled water and basically right now it's starting to get towards the summertime which is why I am using distilled water first. I'm looking for a 70-30 mix and not really a 50-50. If any of you guys ever go and buy yourselves coolant, make sure that you buy the concentrate and then buy some distilled water on top of that. You're going to get a lot more bang for the buck. I obviously didn't drain the entire system. Whatever did come out of the expansion tank was lost. However, I did not decide to actually go underneath and drain the rest of it, simply because there was no need for it. I had done an entire fluid flush maybe only a year ago, um, tops a year and a half. So I didn't really feel it was necessary to do an entire fluid flush, which is why I'm just adding more to it. I also have to mention that when I bought this car about two years ago, just a little bit over two years ago, the owner before me actually had a bottle of coolant in his uh, trunk. And you know, I didn't really think twice of it back then, but now I realized what was going on and that was uh, essentially the coolant was probably leaking out at a very slow rate. Um, so one of the first things that I did when I first got the car was I realized that there was a leak um, and I could smell, you know, um, coolant smells really sweet and therefore I knew there was a leak somewhere. Figured out it was the expansion tank and decided to change it out. So why am I doing the same exact job just two years later? It's probably because I bought myself a generic expansion tank that was probably around 30 bucks. This time I was a little bit smarter and decided to buy myself the correct expansion tank OEM that will definitely last me more than just two years. All these heat cycles of it becoming hot, becoming cold, every time that you turn your car on and off is really stressful on the plastic and after some time the plastic just becomes really brittle. So it just makes sense for yourself to just go and buy yourself the correct OEM version of the expansion tank so that this is not a job that you're gonna end up doing every couple of years. Do yourself the favor and learn from my mistake. Make sure that you either get yourself an OEM version of it or one that is highly rated and make sure that you do not buy the cheap generic ones like I did. 
Also, there is interchangeability between the Z4s as well as some E46s, for example, because both of them utilize the M54 engine, and the M54 engine all use the same expansion tank. So don't worry about getting the specific one for the Z4, just get the one that will actually fit um, and looks exactly the same as the one that you're taking out. All in all, I spent about 120 bucks on a tow, which was 26 miles. Um, and then I ended up spending about a hundred bucks on this expansion tank. So if I had originally just bought the proper expansion tank, I would have never had to pay for a tow, uh, presumably. Um, and this is why you shouldn't just go with a generic $30 expansion tank. I actually looked back and it was, I think I paid maybe $26 shipped for it. Definitely a bad choice and if I had bought a genuine one back then, I would have been saving myself a lot of time and money. So what you see me basically doing here is just making sure that the system is able to bleed itself. You want to check all the hoses to make sure that they're at least warm if not hot to the touch before you actually close off the bleeder screw. And the bleeder screw it should only be having coolant come out of it, not any air bubbles by the time that you close it. After you do that, essentially you just want to make sure that your coolant and you know, expansion tank is filled up to the proper level. For me, it's between the top and bottom line as you can see this bobbing up and down. That's exactly where you want the coolant to be. After you're done with the job, just make sure you put the cover back on. Uh, do note that the new expansion tanks don't come with covers, um, so make sure that you keep your old one and uh, screw it on properly onto the new expansion tank. I'll leave the links below on the PDFs that I found to be really helpful in terms of um, flushing the fluid as well as venting the system. Um, but other than that, you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.